If you own a 3D printer and you've been searching for a unique idea to turn into a business, this might be exactly what you're looking for. In this video, I'll share a special illusion technique that I personally developed, one that, as far as I know, no one else has ever created. I've been an artist for over 35 years and this method is one of the most exciting things I've ever brought to life. It uses only vertical black lines, carefully designed, to reveal not just one but two realistic images when viewed from the front. Whether you're a maker, a designer, or someone with a creative mind, this technique could open the door to custom portrait work, personalized gifts, or even a full product line. Let me take you behind the scenes and show you step by step how to make it, so you can master it, adapt it, and make it your own. Let's begin by preparing our first image in Photoshop. Start by opening the photo you want to work with. The first step is to crop the image vertically using a 5 by 7 ratio. Try to keep the focus on the face because if the face becomes too small, you'll lose essential details like the eyes and mouth. Next, go to image, then image size and change the resolution to 175 pixels per inch. Set the height to 12 centimeters. Now, convert the image to grayscale by going to image, mode and then grayscale. The next step is to adjust the brightness and contrast. Increase both values significantly to create a high contrast image, but be careful to preserve facial details and volume. The goal is to make the face look sculpted with shadows that help define its shape. After that, create a new layer and fill it with a medium gray color. Reduce the opacity and fill of this gray layer to soften its impact. This step helps reduce harsh blacks and pure whites. Pure black would eliminate the gaps between the vertical lines and pure white would erase the black lines entirely. We want a smooth, continuous transition between black and white. Once you're happy with the result, flatten all layers by going to Layer and selecting Flatten Image. Now it's time to convert the image to bitmap mode. Go to image, then mode, and choose bitmap. Set the output resolution to 500. Choose halftone screen, then click OK. Set the frequency to 1, the angle to 90 degrees, and the shape to line. Click OK. Take a close look at the result. You should see long, clean black lines running from top to bottom with clear white gaps in between. Make sure the person's face is still recognizable and the lines are thick enough to survive 3D printing. Very thin lines may not show up well. If you're not satisfied with the result, don't worry. Just go back a few steps, adjust the brightness, contrast or gray layer opacity and try again. You can repeat this process until you get a version that works for you. Once you're happy with the halftone result, go to Image, Mode and choose Grayscale. Then switch to RGB mode. Finally, go to Image Size again. Set the resolution to 200 and the height to 12 cm. That completes the first stage of preparing the image. Now, save your file. We'll get ready to process the second image next. Now we're going to repeat the same steps we did with the first image. Make sure the second image has the exact same size and resolution. That way the number of vertical black lines will match in both images. I'm going to speed up this part of the video so we don't waste time going over the same process again. And that's it. We finished the first stage for both images. Don't forget to save your work. Now we are going to use Inkscape. I've added the download link for Inkscape in the video description. It's free and easy to install. This step is pretty simple. The goal is to convert the image into clean black lines that SketchUp can easily read as paths and points. After you install the program and open it, you'll see a screen like this. Click Open File and choose one of the images we just prepared. A pop-up will appear. Don't change anything, just click OK. Once the image is open, click on it once to select it. Now go to the top menu and choose Path, then Trace Bitmap. 
in the panel that appears on the right, just click apply at the bottom. Wait a few seconds. A new vector layer will appear on top of the original image. Click and drag the new layer to the side. You'll see the original image underneath. Click on the original one and delete it. Now go to file greater than save as. Give your file a name and most importantly, make sure the file type is set to desktop cutting plotter dxf dot dxf. Now open the second image and repeat the exact same steps. Now let's open SketchUp. Make sure your units are set to millimeters. Go to File, then Import, and choose one of the DXF files we just created. When the image loads, you'll see it appears as a set of vertical lines. Double-click on the lines to open the component. Now we're going to draw a straight line along the red axis at the bottom. The reason for this is that the ends of the lines are not perfectly even and we want to give all the lines a clean, equal base. As we draw this line, it will automatically close the gaps and create filled shapes between the vertical lines. Select the faces that were formed in the middle, just the area above the line we drew. Don't select anything below it. Now apply a solid, dark color to these shapes, just to make sure the image is forming correctly without any design issues. Click on one of the colored faces, then right-click and choose Select All with Same Material. Cut the selection. Now, select everything else on the screen and press Delete. From the top menu, choose Paste to bring back only the shapes we need. Then, group the selection. Now, let's do the same thing at the top. Draw a straight line along the red axis to even out the tops of the vertical lines. Once again, select the faces that appear in the middle, this time between the two lines. Apply a different color to these faces. Click on one of them, right-click, and choose Select All with Same Material. Cut the selection. Delete the rest, then go to the menu and paste. Click outside the group to close it. And that's it. The first image is now ready in 3D form. Let's move it a bit to the right to make room for the second image. You can also hide it temporarily to reduce pressure on the software. Now, let's import the second file and do exactly the same steps we did for the first image. I'm going to speed up the video here to save some time. To make things easier and avoid any problems while working, it's better to scale the model up temporarily. Use the tape measure tool to measure any line, then type 100 meters and press enter. The whole model will scale up to 100 meters tall. Once we're completely done, we'll repeat the same step and scale it back down to 200 millimeters. Now select both images and with the rotate tool, rotate them 90 degrees along the red axis. Then select one of the images and rotate it 90 degrees along the blue axis. I've created three custom SketchUp extensions that I'll be using here. These will save you a lot of time and effort. Instead of spending hours doing things manually, these tools can get the job done in just one or two clicks. The first one is called Group Each Face. It automatically groups each individual face with just one click. The second extension is called Batch Extrude Groups. This one opens every selected group, extrudes it to the value you've set earlier in centimeters and closes each group automatically. You can download both of these plugins using the link in the video description. The third tool is called Keep Common Area. And honestly, this one has saved me countless hours of work. It selects only the overlapping area between two groups and deletes everything else. 
Let's start by selecting one of the components, then right click and choose Explode. Now that all the faces and lines are selected, go to group each face and just click once. A message will pop up saying something like created 27 groups from face islands. So now we have 27 individual face groups. Let's repeat the same thing for the second image. Next, select all the groups from one image then go to the Extensions menu and scroll down to Batch Extrude Groups. Click Run Extrude and in the box that pops up, enter 10,000 as the extrusion distance in centimeters. Then click OK and watch the magic happen. All the face groups are now extruded and fully ready. Now let's do the same for the other image. Now that all the components are intersecting, we'll start combining them. Pick a corner and begin by selecting one component from each image, just two at a time. Then go to the extensions menu and choose keep common area, then click run tool, click OK and then OK again. As you can see, this tool keeps only the overlapping area between the two shapes and deletes the rest, leaving behind a clean column-like structure. We'll We'll repeat this process for all the component pairs. The number of components should be equal in both images. If not, that usually means there was a mismatch in the image size or resolution during the Photoshop step. Remember earlier when I emphasized keeping both images exactly the same? This is why. Now I'll speed up the video to save time while I repeat the process. As you can see, we're almost done now, and the hard part is officially over. If you'd like to take a look at the magic you just created, select all the objects. Apply any color you like, preferably a dark one, so the shapes are easier to see. Now, rotate around the model from different angles. From one side, you'll clearly see the first image, and as you change your viewing angle, the second image will gradually appear. To make the illusion even clearer, you can temporarily hide the edge lines. Just go to Styles, then Edit. Uncheck the box next to Edges and also uncheck Profiles. Once you've explored the illusion and enjoyed the result, you can turn the edge lines back on. Let's move on to the final step. It's a very simple one. Now, let's finish up. First, let's bring the color back to its original state. Select all the elements and from the bottom left corner, move the whole piece to the origin point. Now, use the rotate tool to align everything along the red axis. Group all the elements into one component. Next, we need to resize the model to fit your 3D printer. Start by drawing a line the same height as your sculpture. Then use the tape measure tool to measure the height of that line. Now type 200 on your keyboard and press enter. This will rescale the entire model so that its total height becomes exactly 200 millimeters. Now let's draw a backing plate behind the sculpture. Make it the same width and height as your artwork. Then add a 5mm margin to each side, so it forms a clean white frame like you see here. Next, you can design your own support stands to help the piece stand upright. Or, if you prefer, you can use the ones I designed. I've included my base design along with the extension files in the download link. Final step, get your model ready for 3D printing. Just export the design as an STL file. And that's it. We're done. I hope this video helped you and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. I'd love to see your own results. Feel free to share them in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more tutorials like this where I share unique and innovative ideas you won't find anywhere else. Thank you for watching.